I love watching streamed D&D shows, but I've got a problem. Time. While I love watching streams, I don't have time in my schedule to sit down and watch three or four hours of content. Then, inevitably, I get behind and then never catch up with the show. And of course, there are some episodes where you watch five hours of content and get 30 minutes of story. A high signal-to-noise ratio. Then, one day, the people over at the Heralds of Waynar reached out to me. They are, to quote their own words, a Netflix-style D&D show that takes their D&D games and cuts them down to an hour, an hour and a half, and adds visual effects, sound effects, and original music to create a show that is all about the story and the characters and less about these long, drawn-out combats and immersion-breaking moments. And before going further, I will say that they sponsored this video, but I wouldn't be making it if I didn't actually support or like their project. I turned on their first episode at 10pm one night, and I only stopped watching at 3am when I literally could not stay awake any longer. I was hooked. So here are my general thoughts about the Heralds of Waynar. The Dungeon Master, Russell Welch III, does a fantastic job in creating an immersive atmosphere in a dark fantasy world. The players in the campaign, while not world-class actors, are fantastic D&D players. Rosara, Lord Amadeus, Obi, Vano, Gorkaros, and Sorel are all three-dimensional characters with moments to shine in every episode that they're in, and they obviously have well-constructed backstories. Additionally, the show respects my time. Most episodes can be watched in an hour and a half, but have the content of a three or four hour D&D show. The narrative moves forward at a steady clip that leaves room for amazing character moments. Combats are lightning fast and never feel like they are halting the roleplay. A full combat in this show might be 15 to 20 minutes. The Heralds of Waynar doesn't pad its runtime and it feels like you are watching a quote-unquote made-for-TV D&D show. There are opening struggles with the campaign though. It is clear that the first few episodes of the Heralds is a growing period for the show. However, as the first season pushes forward, the quality improves steadily with each episode. So, before going deeper into this review, let me say to all of you who just want to know if you should watch this show, yes, you absolutely should. The show isn't for everyone, but I've shown it to many diehard Critical Role fans, and they loved episode 1. However, there is a steep learning curve at the start, and the show is finding its footing in the first few episodes. I think by episode 5 or 6, it really starts to hit its stride, but honestly, you'll know if this is the show for you by the end of episode 2, I think. The episode, named Blood Door, has one of my favorite character interactions I've ever seen in a streamed D&D show. Here is the card to the show, so if I've sold you already, go watch episode 1. Now, on to some specifics, and we'll start with the pros I have with the show. First, it's a hot start. We are thrown into the middle of the action, and there's no slow buildup. There is a great opening narration from Russell Welch that puts you right in the center of the story. And despite a lot going on initially, I was just immersed in the relative danger that we're thrust into right off the bat. In the chaotic and wild situation, we really get to see who the characters are at the start. Also, the VFX and sound effects are meaningful additions. Creature roars, ambient background noise, and animations whenever spells are cast add to the immersion, at least for myself. And as this show grows, I believe that they only get better. Next, let's talk about the combat. I think this is one of the most immersive D&D 5e combat setups that I've ever seen. The way it's edited is easy and flowing, dynamic. It's never boring, because I know a lot of D&D watchers, when a combat starts, they sometimes just skip it or kind of tune out. Because yeah, D&D 5th edition combat isn't the most exciting thing, it's probably, at least for me, the most boring part about D&D. So what the Heralds of Wayanar does differently is they just show you the rolls, what hits, and then the role-playing moments within the combat. The way I like to think about it is if you were trying to adapt a D&D combat into a TV script, that's what the Heralds of Way and R leaves in. They also have their unique flares and homebrews, they have a critical hit table which actually adds a lot to combat. Really there's no interruption or epique of the roleplaying within the Heralds of Waynar. There is always roleplaying going on and the combat simply adds to the story. It's not a time for the storytelling to stop, which I give a lot of credit to Russell Welch the DM and the entire cast for keeping that going. And let's talk about the cast, because they're not professional voice actors or improv comedians, but they are great D&D players, and what do I mean by this? Firstly, they stay in character, and they think in character in three-dimensional ways. They feed the story instead of draining it. And what I mean by this is that each player has this innate instinct to raise the stakes or do something unique and interesting to elevate the story. Heralds of Waynar is admittedly a story-first D&D game, and the players are story-first players. 
And so their actions, monologues, and role-playing all add to that, which I love. And this is one of the best D&D groups I've ever seen at character barks. And a bark is this one-line character-driven remark that's usually given in combat or when a character's about to do something. These one-liners add to the roleplay and the story into my own immersion. And also this group is not afraid of inter-party conflict and really from what I've seen so far they handle it well. You never know what this cast is going to do next and it feels like everything is on the table which is awesome. And now I want to take a moment to talk about the Heralds of Wayanar's DM, Russell Welch, and I think he's this group's greatest strength. Firstly, he dealt with so much in the opening of this campaign, and I think he handled it incredibly well. Not only is he launching a new D&D campaign, but he has to deal with all of these technical aspects, and um, I don't know if I would have been able to get through it, but he did, and he's been piloting this show incredibly well. Welch has his own unique style, which I think is really important when you're watching a stream D&D game. He isn't trying to emulate anybody else, he is his own DM. He brings his own unique flair to every single session that he DMs. Russell also brings incredibly deep and complex world building. He obviously put a lot into his world, and there is so much to uncover across multiple campaigns. But I think Welch's hallmark, at least for me so far, is his flair for the unexpected. There were many times when Russell throws a right hook out of nowhere at the party, and half the fun is watching as the characters just try to react. You never know what Russell Welch has up his sleeve next, which I think is part of the fun. Is he a perfect DM? No, but is he an entertaining DM to watch? Yes, I think so. His relentless drive towards immersive gameplay and narrative storytelling just speaks to me, and I love it. But every rose has its thorns. So let's talk about some of the cons, or I wouldn't say cons, but maybe initial failings that the Heralds of Wayanar have. Firstly, to start out, and we've talked about it, there are technical issues. Glitching green screens, audio bugs, losing video, etc. But they're a new D&D show, and they don't have the platform that these bigger shows like Critical Role, Dimension 20, what have you, have. But the team has said that by episode 13, they've hired new editors and dramatically improved their quality. I'm going to be honest, I went to check a little bit, I haven't reached fully episode 13 yet, and I didn't really want to spoil myself, so I watched 30 seconds to a minute, and while I did get a little spoiled, I will say there is a significant improvement from episode 1 to episode 13. And even a big improvement in my opinion from episode 1 to episode something like 6. But probably the biggest obstacle you're going to face is that there is a huge lore dump at the beginning of this campaign. There's a lot of information that we really don't know. If you're just clicking on episode one, you don't have a lot of background. It's kind of difficult. There are so many nouns being thrown at you, so many people and place names and weird things that it's hard to just get it all in your head. Lots of things to know and understand. There are also character origins and introductions, which I only found after my first few episodes watching the show. And those might help, but I looked at one of the character introduction origins and it was like an hour and 30 minutes. So right now I'm treating it like reading a modern fantasy book. You're thrown into the deep end and you have to learn to swim on your own. You're gonna slowly begin picking stuff up. However, you always understand moment to moment what's going on, just not the context. It would be nice if they released a series detailing world lore and backstory all in one place because I could just listen to Russell Welch talk for an hour or so about what the fuck this world is, truly. They do have a Wikipedia page that I think I will be reading before going forward, and I'll place a link to it down in the description. You don't need it, but I think that it would personally be more helpful to me because, again, a lot going on session one. It's a hot start. And now we're going to be getting into some minor spoilers. So if you want to know absolutely nothing, go to this timestamp. All right. So let's talk about getting attached to the wrong characters. In episode one, my favorite characters were Gorkaros and Sorel. And by the end of episode two, both were gone from the campaign. This left me incredibly sad because Gorkaros in particular was my favorite character episode one far and away. While Matt was on the show, I think he added so much, and many of Gorkaros' lines still stick out in my head. I mean, just check this one out. And she says that, as I said, he will be your responsibility. I will dig two graves, Paladin, and I will not be mad about it. 
and Gorkraus will walk back toward the front of the cave. See, now that's some fucking role-playing. However, the rest of the characters that remain still did grow on me. I love the Paladin Rosara as a great moral balance for the party, and just a, a good foil to a lot of the characters. I think Obi as a character uh, is one of my most appreciated ones. He grew so much from the first episode to where I'm at now, and he has all of these great one-liners. I think Brad is probably the best at these barks that I talked about earlier. And Vano is probably the most grounded member of the group. Uh, I just like his character through and through. I'm a fan of the accent. Joshua Jenkins is great. And I love that he always leans into the story. So while we do lose a lot of characters in the opening three episodes, I think that the party after that is still strong enough that it's kept me watching. It just threw me off balance a bit as a viewer. Like imagine if in Lord of the Rings, half of the Fellowship at the end of the first movie just was not seen again. Like the other half of the Fellowship is great, but you know, it, it's just one of those things that I had to get over. Overall though, I think The Heralds of Waynar is a great show. It feels like something I can sink my teeth into and a show that really is a D&D show meant for watching. It's edited for the viewer experience. And at the time of recording, they just released episode one of their new campaign, Emissaries of the Ancients. I've not watched it yet because there might be spoilers, but it might be a good jumping in point. The first episode is only about 40 minutes. Now the team has a whole first season behind them where they were able to grow and learn and improve. And honestly, if you're still watching this video, what are you doing? Chaos awaits. Just click it. Just just go watch. Like, you don't need to be here anymore. I'm, I'm allowing you to leave the channel. Just go support the small D&D creator.